Okay, in this video we're going to discuss the difference between average velocity and instantaneous velocity. And to do that, we'll have a particular problem. Let's suppose we had this situation. I suppose you're standing on a 100 foot tall cliff and you throw a rock up. The rock goes up in the air, uh, comes down and hits the ground. And the path of the rock is described by this function. Now we'll ask some questions. Some of the questions will involve what is the average velocity and some of the questions will involve instantaneous velocity. So let's begin by looking at average velocity. Uh, now first of all, just to give this thing some units, let's suppose we have time across the bottom. So across the bottom of this, this would be in seconds. Then uh, this will be the object's position. This will be, we'll put that in terms of feet. So height is feet, uh, time is seconds. Now if you look in a physics book um, and you're looking for the definition of average velocity, uh, you should find this. So the average velocity would just be equal to, and usually it's given by a change in position divided by change in time. So we'll go ahead and put this, I'll use delta here. So the change in position divided by the change in time. And that's the formal definition of average velocity. As far as a, a formula goes, we'll write it in this form. Um, the object's position at time 2 would be f at time 2. Uh, the object's position at time 1 would be f at time 1. And then you'd have time 2 minus time 1 would be the change in time. And actually, if you look at it, that's really nothing more than the slope formula. Just y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So suppose the problem looks like this. So if you're looking with average velocity, you're always given two times. So at the first time, we'll call time 1, suppose it was 1 second. Time 2 is 3 seconds. So you want to find the average velocity between uh, time 1 and time 2, between 1 second and 3 seconds. Now I would suggest that you actually draw these points on a graph. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to one second, go up on the graph, and the object's position at one second, it's sitting right there. Uh, go to three seconds, the object's position at three seconds, it's sitting right here. And what the average velocity is, it's nothing more than the slope of the line between those two points. So let's go ahead and draw a line in, in there. We'll go from this point over to this point. So if you can find the slope of that line you'll have the average velocity. And we'll do one more thing too. We'll put an x and a y here. This distance from here to here um, would be the change in time. This distance from here to here would be uh, the change in position. So change in position over change in time. So to solve this, um, you actually it's just a matter of evaluating the function at time 2, evaluating the function at time 1, putting it into this formula, and you'll have the average velocity. So it's actually pretty easy to do. So first of all, let's evaluate the position at time 2. So that would be at 3 seconds. So evaluate this original function at 3 seconds. So that's going to give you f at 3 seconds. And just everywhere you've got a t, go ahead and plug in a 3. So this would be 3 squared plus 80 times 3 plus 100. And if you stick that on a calculator, you'll come up with 196. And the units are going to be feet. So to show that in the graph, that's what this is. So at time 3 seconds, you are 196 feet high. So now, find the position at time uh, t1. So that would be at one second. So plug one second into the original function. So squared plus 80 times 1 plus 100. And if you evaluate this, you'll come up with 164 feet. And what that is, that's the object's height at one second. So you know this height is 164 feet. Now, you want to find the average velocity. So the average velocity is equal to, and again, we'll just use this formula right here. So it's the height at time t2 minus the height at time t1. So in our problem, the way we're set up, that would be um, 196 minus 
164, and that's going to be in feet. Then the difference in time, T2 minus T1, would just be 3 seconds uh, minus 1 second. So that's going to give you, if you subtract those, this would be 32. And again, the units on this one would be feet. And then in the denominator, this would be 2 seconds. So this thing changed by 2 seconds. And the corresponding change here was uh, 32, put it right here, 32 feet. So it changed by 32 feet in 2 seconds. So that's going to give you um, 16, a positive 16 feet per second. And that's going to be the average velocity between here and here. So the slope of this line right here would be 16, and the units will be feet per second. So there's one example. And just remember, if the velocity is positive, it means the object was moving up on the average during that time. Uh, if the velocity is negative, then that means that the average velocity during the period of time uh, was going toward the ground. Okay, just to try a little bit different example, let's try one more. Same problem, but let's change the times from 3 to 5 seconds to see what's going on. So this time, this is going to be time 1, this will be time 2, but we'll follow exactly the same process. So first of all, we'll draw a picture of it. So at time 3, this is it right here, we've, same point that we had the last time. But at 5 seconds, go up to where you hit the graph, and it's right there. So what I want is the slope of the line between these two. So I'm going to go from here down to here. And that's the slope of the line. And if I can find that slope, I will have the velocity. So let's, we'll follow exactly the same process. First of all, um, evaluate the function at time 2. So the original function evaluated at 5 seconds. And just everywhere you've got a t, plug in a 5. So minus 16 times 5 squared plus 80 times 5 plus 100. And if you evaluate that, um, you will come up with 100, and the units are going to be feet. So at 5 seconds, this thing is 100 feet high. So now, we need to find the object's height at 3 seconds. So let's find f at 3, which is going to be at time t1. But we've actually done this in the previous problem. So f at 3 was 196, so we can use that one again. This will be 196 feet. So at time 1, it's at 196 feet. At time 2, it's at 100 feet. So what's the average velocity during this time period? And again, it's just going to be the slope of that line. So in this case, the average velocity is going to be equal to, and again, uh, same thing we had last time, it's just going to be um, the change in position divided by the change in time. Well, this time the initial position was 100, uh, the, fi pardon me, the final position is 100 feet, minus the initial position, which is 196 feet, and this takes place between 5 seconds and 3 seconds. So, uh, if you... Um, Subtract these, this will turn out to be, and we'll put here, uh, this will be a negative 96 feet. And this occurs in 2 seconds. And if you divide those, you come up with negative 48 feet per second. So the slope of that black line right there is negative 48 feet per second. Again, you can kind of tell if the velocity is positive, the slope of the line will be positive, so the object's moving up on the average. Um, and if the slope of the line is negative, it's moving down. So again, to find average velocity, it's nothing more than the slope of the line between two points. So the change in position over the change in time. And if you just use the slope form, you'll find it. So it's fairly easy to find the average velocity. But keep in mind, when you're working with average velocity, it's always between two points. So now let's compare that to instantaneous velocity, which occurs at a single point. See what the difference is. So now the situation looks like this. Um, <clears throat> same formula, same setup, uh, but the problems will be this. It says, find, in this case, find the instantaneous velocity at a single point. So at time uh, 2 seconds, we'll go up and I'll still do this thing. I'll put a dot right here. Now, what the instantaneous velocity is, so the instantaneous velocity... 
is equal to, and it's nothing more than the slope of the tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line at uh, time t whatever. So if you're interested in the instantaneous velocity at time t2, just come up to this point, plot the point, and then draw yourself a tangent line. So real quick, let's just put a tangent line on there. We'll roughly sketch it in, and it would look, say, maybe something about like this. So there's a tangent line. So if I can find the slope of that tangent line right there, I will have <clears throat> the velocity of the object at that instant, at a single point. Now, also, instantaneous velocity, another definition of it, it's the derivative. So instantaneous velocity is the derivative of the position function. So the derivative of the position function. So a velocity is defined to be the derivative of position. Well, this is the position function right here. So let's go ahead and just find its derivative. So if you want to know the instantaneous velocity, find the derivative of the original position function, which would be minus 32t plus 80. So now, this function gives you the object's position. This function gives you the object's velocity. So to find the velocity at 2 seconds, just evaluate the derivative function at 2. So we'll evaluate f prime at 2, and just everywhere you've got a t, plug in a 2. So what this one's going to be, it would be minus 32. And in place of t, we'll put a uh, 2. Then plus 80. And if you evaluated this, um, you would have, this would be minus 64 plus 80, which will turn out to be um, 16. So this would be 16 feet per second. So that's going to be the velocity at 2 seconds. So the slope of that line would be 16 feet per second. And you've got the velocity at that instant. Uh, let's try one more. Find a velocity at 5 seconds. So the same thing from 5 seconds. Go up and we'll put a point right here. So at 5 seconds, the object is right there. And now, again, just draw a tangent line the best you can. I'll just put one and we'll say it goes through about right oh, here. So there's a tangent line. If I can find the slope of that tangent line, <clears throat> then I'll have the velocity of the object at that instant. So again, same thing, just take 5 seconds, plug it into the uh, derivative. So f prime evaluated at 5 would be minus 32, and put 5 seconds in, plus 80. So that's going to be equal to, this would be negative 160 <clears throat> plus 80. which would give you a negative 80, and again, the units will be feet per second. So in this case, the slope of that line is negative 80 feet per second. And in this case, if the, uh, the slope of the line is positive, that means that the velocity at that instant was positive, the object was moving up. If the slope of the line or the velocity is negative, that means that at that instant, the object was moving down at 80 feet per second. So again, it's pretty easy to find um, the, both the instantaneous velocity and the average. And let's sum it up by doing this last little step here. <clears throat> so suppose it looks like this. On the, on, in general, if you're working with either one of these two, if you want the average velocity, then use the original function and work with the slope of the line. And I want to emphasize between two points. So you want the slope of the line between two points. If you're working with instantaneous velocity, just find the derivative function, and the instantaneous velocity is the slope of the tangent line at a single point. So again, if you're working with average velocity, two points. If you're working with instantaneous velocity, a single point. And again, if you're working with average velocity, you're working with the slope rule and the original function, if you're looking for instantaneous velocity, it's the derivative function evaluated as a single point. And we'll go back and take one quick look again. So average velocity, again, you've got uh, two points, and find the slope of the line between those two points using this definition. 
Then finally, for instantaneous velocity, um, you want the slope of the line of the tangent line at a single point. To do that, find the derivative of the original function and evaluate the derivative at the point that you're interested in. So both of them are a pretty easy process, but uh, that'll give you a little bit of an idea of the difference between instantaneous velocity and average velocity.